Oh, my candle isn't on. Hi, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before. And if you haven't been here before, please subscribe to be a part of the bilingual family, which is mostly just me trying to speak English. In today's video, right now, I'm looking a little rough. Uh, I also don't really feel my best, but I really wanted to film a video for you guys because I, I need it. It's been a rough few weeks. Today, I want to kind of play with new makeup that I picked up from Boozy Shop. I I also picked up some new makeup from Beauty Bay and for, from Tower 28 and from Kosas. But I picked up a few new Essence products from their new Spring and Summer collection and also uh, some Maybelline Inglot, some Kikom Lano, some Kosarex, some NYX. Okay, so I put, I put my uh, screen on manual focus so hopefully it's not wrong for like the entire fucking video. Before I begin this video, all links to these products will be down below in the description together with where you can find me on other social media. You don't have to use those links if you don't want to, but if you do, you support me and my channel in more ways than you can imagine, I promise you. But no pressure, of course, and feel free to do whatever you want to do. So I want to start off with some skincare first, but this is the Essence Hello Good Stuff Milky Face Moisturizer. It's calming and hydrating with turmeric oil. I have already tried this on my like Instagram unboxing story, so I have used all of these products a little bit. It's a very thin formula, but it's spreadable at the same time, and it feels quite hydrating on the skin as well, and I actually really like it. The smell is indeed turmeric. It's very kind of a, a weird smell to be in makeup, I think but it's the only thing that I don't really necessarily like is the uh, the squirt thing because it it's not that great <laughs> it looks slightly yellow like it does in the thing so like I said it's very easy to spread sometimes you have like products that just you stick in one place and they don't really move to the next part of your face very easily this is not one of them how does this look Awful, exactly what we wanted. That's the first Essence product. I actually really like it. It's a good uh, product. And that actually reminds me of something, which is uh, the Essence Lip Care Booster Lip Serum with 10% peach oil. So this is a lip serum that I've been using for the last couple of days because my lips are dead. <laughs> Like, they are not in a in a great place right now, and it's just because everything has been so dry lately. And also, there's been like some pretty good weather, but pretty good weather doesn't necessarily mean moist weather in here in Belgium. It's not a very humid climate, and therefore my, uh, my lips have been suffering. But it's a very thin formula, and it feels quite like oily in a sense. It's <laughs> very weird, but it's called peach lip oil, so... And the smell reminds me of Maria Candies. I don't know how you say that or if you even have that in your country, but it smells like Maria Snoopius. Very interesting smell. <laughs> and uh, it moisturizes very nicely and it gives quite a nice bit of sheen as you can see. And then the other thing that I picked up from Boozy Shop is a new sunscreen. Currently, I am not using my sunscreens. I know, please, for the love of God, don't shoot me. All of my sunscreens right now, I used up my La Roche-Posay one, which was actually one of my favorites. And now I have like two other sunscreens that I don't really necessarily like. And it's putting me off putting on my sunscreen every single day. So I picked up the Kosarx Allo Soothing Sunscreen with an SPF of 50 plus. Looks like this, uh, you get 50 mil and I absolutely really, really enjoy it. It's 50 plus. But the white cast that it has, because when you have something that is 50 plus, it's bound to apparently have somewhat of a white cast. And the white cast on me, even though I am already quite pale, does blend in very quickly. Obviously, I can't speak for complexions that are even like a tint darker than myself. But I really like the way this spreads out on my skin. I like that it doesn't feel heavy or lightweight or too tacky. Like the sunscreens that I have right now feel really, really greasy and this doesn't this one doesn't do any of that and it also smells like cleaning products which is funny to me 
but it didn't. So yeah, I think this is going to be my new go-to sunscreen. I like it so much. Now I don't have a new foundation, so I'm quickly going to put on the Essence Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation. If you want to see more of this foundation, I recommend check you checking out my full face of Essence. I'll uh, oh, there's something in my eye, but I'll link it in the description down below. The link to the full face of Essence. Oh my gosh. So I have uh, the foundation on my face. I just love this foundation so much, but it's unfortunately a little bit too dark for me right now. I have gotten so pale the last year, like even paler than I already am. So next up for concealers, I picked up two concealers and the first one is a new one from Essence. So this is the Essence Skin Loving Sensitive Concealer Covering and Caring. It's non-comet, comma, <laughs> Comedogenic? Comedogenic? It's non comedogenic. <laughs> and it has aloe vera. It doesn't have any added fragrances, alcohol, silicones, parabens, and mineral oil. And in that one, I have the shade 05 Fair. And then I also have the Catrice True Skin High Cover Concealer with Hyaluronic Acid and Waterproof. So, I, like I said, I have already tried both of these concealers. I actually really like the Essence one and it's also the one that I'm going to use today. I'm not going to use the Catrice one because unfortunately I have the shade 010 Ca Cool Cashmere and that is way too dark for me so I'm either going to use this in the summer or I'm going to give it to a friend that hopefully will like it. So I'm going to use the Essence Concealer for today. So I've noticed that this formula is definitely very natural and I actually really like the finish of this formula. It's very natural, it has like a slight uh, luminosity to it in the, in the sense that it is a very dewy concealer. I also like that it's quite lightweight underneath the eyes. It doesn't really feel like anything and it doesn't look dry or cakey which is amazing and it doesn't really put too much emphasis on the texture, you know, like the texture of skin which I like. You can have some concealers that do that, that really emphasize all of the little bumps and fine lines that you have but this doesn't one doesn't really settle into fine lines. It is a concealer that will crease but to be honest every single concealer will crease. There's nothing that you can do to really prevent that but as you can see it blends out really really nicely very quickly. The coverage is definitely more of like a light to medium coverage. It covers up pretty much everything. Very used to high coverage. This will come across as a light coverage to you, but I'm someone who I like high coverage, but not necessarily in my concealers all of the time. So this is a more of a medium coverage to me. Now I don't have any new powder, so I'm quickly going to use the Essence All About Matte Fixing Compact Powder to quickly set just underneath my eyes, not really anywhere else. The next product is also from Essence. It's the Glow Glow Go Instant Highlighter a Dewy Finish in Seconds and I have the shade 01 Fairy Lights. So this is supposed to be a liquid highlighter. It's also from their new uh, summer spring and summer collection and I picked this up because I don't actually have a lot of liquid highlighters. Yeah, we're gonna quickly use this. So it comes with basically it looks like a concealer. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do because I've noticed last time that this dries down really really quickly. So I think I'm just gonna take my finger like this and then I'm gonna take that on the high cheekbones and then I'm just going to take that and apply it on the cheekbones and then hopefully it works out. <laughs> so what I've noticed from this product is that it is a very natural kind of product. This is a product though that I actually really like for like every day type of situations. It's very natural, it's very, it's not over the top glossy. So if you're somebody who likes a little bit of sheen to your face like this, but you don't like it when it is too much. This is a little bit more subtle, uh, but like I said, it dries out really quickly. So I think if you have oily skin, this could be a nice one as well because it dries down. It doesn't feel tacky or anything on the skin, so that's great. I also feel like it doesn't really emphasize texture that you already have too much. So that is obviously like a great thing if that is something that you are worried about with highlighters because the highlighters tend to put emphasis on the texture that you have. Then for 
for blush. I have a cream blush and I said I was not going to use this before I had pictures but I unfortunately I can't wait anymore and I really wanted to film this video. So this is the Milani Coral Crush Cheek Cream Blush. I have the shade Coral Crush. <laughs> So this is what the shade looks like. Now in real life it does look more of a coral on screen. It does look very very pink. I've been really enjoying the weather outside right now. It's like a little bit windy but there's lots of sunshine and it just reminds me of a spring feeling so I've been trying to feel a little bit more uplifting and just spring-like and this looks like a really nice spring shade for my collection but I really wanted to try out this formula I haven't necessarily heard a lot of people talk about this formula which is kind of weird because it's like Milani and I feel like a lot of people talk about Milani but apparently not so I'm gonna take my brush if I can find it uh, this is actually the only product today that I haven't used on the Instagram thing because I wanted to make pictures didn't work out so I'm gonna use my elf small stipple brush I'm gonna do one side with a brush and then we'll do one side with oh gosh we're gonna do both sides with a brush okay I'm gonna blend this out I'm gonna get most of the pigment off my brush and then we're gonna blend this out uh, some could say it's emergency but I'm gonna wash off my face and you know, two seconds after this video, so it's not a big deal. I'm gonna take my concealer and I'm just gonna put like one dot on each cheek. This was something that I wasn't expecting. Okay, but I think we managed to save it with that little bit of concealer. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so funny. First impressions of this product, it's obviously very, very pigmented. I'm gonna have to think about that in the future, that it is in fact very, very pigmented. I like the color, it's very poppy, it's very spring-like, it's very vibrant, um, maybe a little bit too vibrant in the beginning. I'm just gonna check how it looks when I apply it with a it's just the pigmented formula in general, so be careful with that. The formula doesn't feel too tacky on my skin, which is surprising because in the pan it looked like really glossy, but it seems to dry down quite nicely. So that's a product that I'm gonna have to like play with a little bit more and then give you my final opinion. And then now for bronzer, I have the Kiko Milano Holiday Gems Precious Matte Powder and I have the shade 06 as far as I know, this is not a bronzer. <laughs> I got this from my family for Christmas, but I only got it in like January, like the end of January, because I didn't spend Christmas with them and it was exams and all of that stuff, you know, COVID related things. But when you open it up, it actually looks like a little bit of a bronzer shade for me. It does look a little bit more orange in real life. I really like the packaging of this product. I mean, like, look at this. This is also one of my first uh, Kika Milani products, so I have the bronzer now. I really like the imprints, I think it looks so cool. Oh, it's a matte formula, by the way. I think I think I did try this, like, once, and I actually really liked it, despite it being, like, a full matte formula. Uh, I have dry skin, so matte formulas don't always look the best on me. A little bit on the side of the nose like that and then a little bit underneath as well so that's the Kiko Milano bronzer really like it so far so now that the base is done I want to move on to brows and I actually have a really exciting well two exciting products actually for the brows and for the eyes so that's a good thing so for the brows I picked up the NYX lift and snatch brow tint pen and I have the shade Ash Brown. I picked this up because I've seen a lot of people using a marker, like a marker kind of product like this for their brows and I was very intrigued but a lot of people were saying that this kind of product like the marker pen is very much uh, a, a more natural way of doing your brows and it looks the most like actual hair strokes so I was very interested in this and I have tried it already and I really really like this product the only thing that I wish this product had is a spoolie on the other side that would have made it so much easier because right now I carry a different spoolie from a different product to 
brush up my brows like this. So the formula of this brow pen is actually a little bit watery and it's also not the most pigmented. So don't expect full pigmentation of this product uh, going into it. And also don't expect most of all full opacity of this product. It's quite a sheer product, but it has enough pigment to look like it's doing something to your brows and it has enough pigment to actually look like brow strokes. I was very intrigued by this product because obviously I have a lot of brow hairs and at first I was like, you know, are we going to see a difference? But you absolutely see a difference and it's insane how natural it is. You just have to like get the hang of using it at first, but once you do, this is an amazing product. I am going to zoom you guys in a little bit closer so you can actually see what's happening on my face. So now it's also a little darker. But. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna brush up the brow hairs that I have. So now I'm just shaking the product and then we're gonna open it and I'm quickly going to do my brows just like this because I really have to focus for this unfortunately. The thing is, I can be a little messy with this product because I already have quite a bit of brow hairs, but it does wonders for like the front of my brow. So once I get to the front of my brows, I use quick hair like strokes like this to uh, just quickly fill them in. And you don't want to apply too much pressure. You don't want to go in like, you know, because that's going to make it look a little bit unnatural, unfortunately. So what I like to do now is take a spoolie and just brush it out a little bit. And again, brushing out the product a little bit, but most of it will have dried down a little. Okay, so these are my brows right now. I'm going to zoom out so you can see them um, just in better lightning, basically, because this is going to be quite dark. And it's not an accurate representation of how dark my brows actually look. So this is what my brows look like, like right now. They're a little bit darker, a little bit more structured. And I just really like the effect that this brow product gives. I think it's a really cool, cool, cool way of doing your brows, basically. But yeah, the Lift and Snatch by NYX is definitely one of my favorite products right now. It's so good and I'm really happy with how it makes my brows look. Then the other product that I have for the eyes that I am very excited about is the Ingla Duraline or Duraline or whatever you want to call it <laughs> and it's basically a makeup mixing liquid so why i bought this is i saw a cut creaser over on instagram talking about how you can make every single eyeshadow into a eyeliner by using this and i was like oh my gosh i could make all of the palettes that i have into eyeliners that sounds so great and it seemed like a really nice way of like of using the products that i already had and that i wasn't necessarily using as much so yeah this is what it looks like it looks pretty basic to me the palette that i was using today as a mirror is the nabla secret palette and today i want to actually do a very simple liner kind of look and i was thinking about either fantasize which is this blue right here or uh, rosemary which is like this green right here and I think <clears throat> oh what was that I think I'm gonna go for both of them and kind of like combine them in a look just put a little bit of contigo which is this shade right here into my creeds as a little bit of a transition shade to warm things up a little just a little bit so I have a really tiny uh, eyeliner brush that I'm gonna use today and then I have the palette. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open it up first of all. Oh my gosh, this is really difficult. <laughs> we're gonna do it like that for a while. So I'm opening up the product. There's already a drip coming down and I'm gonna put it into fantasize first. Then I'm taking this and we're mixing that. Oh yeah. Oh. 
Oh, <laughs> I was totally blocking the view. I apologize. So this is the first eye. So I'm gonna do the other eye. Okay, so we did, um, what is this called, fantasize, and now I'm going to do this color right here, which is called Rosemary, putting in a drop, I think, or two, <laughs> and I'm going to put that on top of the other one. Oh my gosh, that's such a pretty color. Okay, so this is the look. I put a little bit too much of the mixing liquid and now we have like a little bit of a crease situation, but that is completely fine. I'm quickly going to fix that <laughs> and then I'm going to put a little bit of play hard right here in the center of the liner and a little bit on the inner corner and I'm going to put on some mascara and we'll be right back for the last step, which is lips. I put on mascara, I put on uh, the like play hard shade right here and I am obsessed with this look. <laughs> I think it's so cool. So the last thing that I want to apply to my face is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss and I have the shade Stone. Now I picked this up even though I already have way too many glosses because a lot of people were talking about this and of it being like a Fenty Beauty dupe and I actually really like the formula. I think this is also my first Maybelline product in such a long time. <laughs> like I haven't been interested in a Maybelline product since the um, like the Dewy foundation like that one. Uh, so I have already tried this. It has quite a big applicator and this is formula is quite thin but it has a lot of pigment so this is the shade on my complexion so it's a kind of like pinky nude i really like the shade i really like the formula it's definitely glossy but it doesn't feel heavy on the lips like it doesn't feel too thick or yeah just too thick or sticky which i really appreciate and in terms of it being a fancy dupe i'm not sure because it does have quite a bit of pigment and it does feel a little less heavy or uh, glossy than the Fenty Beauty ones. The Fenty Beauty ones are very rich, very gloss like but not thick but these feel a little bit toned down. It's still a gloss but it's not as heavy of a gloss as the Fenty Beauty ones. But I do really like this gloss. I really like the shade. So yeah guys, this is the final look of the Playing With New Makeup video. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I really enjoy the look that we created. It's ta -da, ta da Even though I feel like my hair is absolute trash, I really like how my face looks right now and sometimes that is just the priority. So yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this video and that you will be back for more in the future. And if you want to see more, please don't forget to subscribe to this video. Leave a like or a comment down below on this video as well and tell me what you want to see in the future, if you like this look, all of that stuff. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!